All right, what's happening, guys? Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to read a spark plug on a two-stroke. Now, this is more geared towards a two-stroke, but you could apply it to a four-stroke as well. So, there's a bit of confusion out there where exactly to read the spark plug at, and what are the indicators of a lean or a rich condition. And there's also a lot more you can read from a spark plug too, like ignition timing, uh, detonation, uh, heat range, see if the spark plug is too hot or too cold for the bike. So before we start, definitely want to make sure you have a couple new spark plugs on hand because old spark plugs will not work for this. And so let's jump right into it. All right, the first test we're going to do here is checking the overall jetty of the bike. Just see how the bike is running overall. And then later on, we're going to do a chalk test as well. So to check the overall jetty of the bike, we're going to install a new spark plug like I mentioned earlier run it for 30 minutes, pull it out, and we'll be able to see a ton of information here on the spark plug. It's really valuable stuff. So the first thing we're gonna look at is obviously air and fuel ratio, and then on a two stroke, the oil and fuel mixture. And then we can also look at ignition timing, see if the spark plug is the right heat range, if it's too cold or too hot for this bike. And then we can check for detonation as well. So keep in mind, doing this test will only give you a general idea of how the bike is running overall. It's not gonna tell you if your main jet is too rich or too lean, if your pilot's too rich or too lean, or mid-range with your needle, if that is one way or the other. And it could mask a really lean or really rich circuit. So by doing this test, you're not gonna know if you're really lean up top or really lean down low. But the test we're gonna do later on, called the chop test, will tell you exactly where you're at with the main jet whether it's too lean, too rich, or just perfect. Before I go any further, I gotta give a big, big thank you to Works Connection for sponsoring the channel. They supplied me with this bike stand and a ton of billet parts for that CR250 build I'm working on. So what I like about the stand is it's super well built, really stable, and it's got this block, you can put it wherever, but especially on a bike like this 125 where the bottom of the frame isn't flat and it doesn't wanna sit flat on the stand, you know, a lot of times I'll put the bike on a regular stand and the front wheel will be on the ground and it just kind of kind of makes it difficult. So I've got both wheels off the ground, which is obviously what you want with the stand and it makes it a lot easier for working on. So actually, Works Connection sent over a bunch of sticker packs here for me to give away. And uh, so comment down below. I'm going to pick some of you guys to send these sticker packs off to you. So comment down below, WC works connection and I'll go through and pick five of you guys and send you one of these sticker packs so good luck with that all right I'm gonna pop a new spark plug in the bike run it for 30 minutes come back pull it out and take a look at it So after 30 minutes of running the spark plug in the bike, there's quite a bit we can look at here. The first thing is gonna be the overall jetting of the bike. And we can read that here on the flat surface. So a tan color is gonna indicate a good mixture. If it's black, that's gonna be rich and no color would be a lean condition. So this looks somewhat tan, maybe leaning on the edge of no color. So I would say that this bike is just a tad bit lean, but that's where it's gonna make the most power is on the leaner side of things. So not a big deal, it looks pretty good there. And then next up is the look at the oil deposits from the pre-mix. So I mixed my fuel at 32 to one, which is great for 125 on track since you're wide open most of the time. But on trails, you definitely wanna go like 40 to one or even leaner than that. So there is a good amount of oil here in the threads and the tip. I wouldn't say it's too much oil. So it looks like 32 to one is about right for this bike on the track. But if there's any more oil than what's on there right now, I would bump it to 40 to one. And obviously if you're fouling out plugs, you need to go with a leaner premix ratio. 
Another thing we can look for is detonation or pre-ignition. If any of that exists, there's gonna be some melting here between the electrode and the insulator. On this spark plug, I don't see any signs of that. So another sign of detonation is here at the bottom of the insulator, underneath the threads, there's gonna be some black or silver specks. So you need to cut the threads off, and I'll actually be doing that later on in the video to do the chop test. So I'll explain what I'm talking about there. What I'm gonna look at now is ignition timing. And you can read that from the tip of the electrode. So the lighter color should be less than half a millimeter from the tip. With this plug, you can't really tell. I don't think I ran it long enough to get that lighter color to show up. But if the lighter color is more than half a millimeter from the tip, you'll need to retard the ignition timing. And the very last thing I'm gonna read here on this spark plug is the heat range. And we can check that out here on the tip. So if the plating is burnt on the end of the tip, that means the spark plug is too cold for that bike. And if it's burnt here at the base, that indicates the spark plug is too hot. Ideally, it should be burnt right here on the bend of the tip. On this spark plug, you can't really tell exactly where the plating is burnt. Once again, I don't think I ran it long enough. If anything, it looks like it's burnt more towards the base. So that would mean this spark plug is too hot for this bike. And so how the heat range works on these NGK spark plugs is the number here, BR9EG. The nine indicates this is a colder style plug. Eight is standard and seven is the hotter style. So this being the colder style plug, it doesn't really make sense that the base here, the plating is more burnt at the base, but uh, I'll have to run this plug some more and then check it out again, see if this is too cold or too hot for the bike. Now it's time for the chop test. This is the absolute best way to see if your main jet is the right size or not. So what we're gonna do is have an old plug in the bike, warm up the bike, take it out, put in a brand new spark plug, then go through the gears, shut the bike off, and uh, let it coast to a stop, pull out the new spark plug, cut it apart, and check it out. So the reason why I have to warm up the bike with the old plug is right when I start the bike with a new plug to do the chop test, I'll just have to go wide open. And obviously you don't want to do that with a cold engine. Pop in this new spark plug. So like I was saying before, I'm just going to fire up the bike and immediately take off, go through the gears at full throttle. And once I reach, say, third or fourth gear, pull in the clutch, shut it off, let it coast, and pull the plug out after that. Just gonna put the plug in the vise, chop the end off so we can look at the insulator at the bottom. All right, so you can see I've got the spark plug split apart and what we're looking for here on the insulator is a brown or a tan ring. And that ring should be two millimeters thick. If it's thicker or it's black, that means the main jet is a bit rich. Or if it's whitish and less than two millimeters, that'll indicate a lean condition. I'm gonna go ahead and measure it with the set of calipers here. I'll show you what two millimeters will look like. So it looks right about two millimeters. Pretty dead on, maybe a little bit thinner, which that's what I would prefer. You know, being a little bit leaner, like I said earlier, a tad bit lean builds more power. So yeah, it looks pretty good. This is kind of a tannish, a little darker than tan color. So everything looks really good on this insulator here. 
And one thing I was referring to earlier is detonation. So you'll be able to tell here on the base of the insulator, if there's any black or silver specks, that'll indicate some detonation. Let's see if this plug has any. There's a little bit right here. And it's hard to tell if that's from taking off the threads off the plug or if it's actual detonation, but not really enough to be worried about. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below and hit that subscribe button too. And don't forget to enter that giveaway for those Works Connection stickers as well. And another thing, if you wanna see me do an in-depth two-stroke jetting video, make sure you let me know down below in the comments section. All right, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in a future video. Keep it prime.